Hello everyone. This video is about the minimization problems in simplex method and in this video we will see how the artificial variables are used in the simplex method in order to find the optimum values. So in order to move for forward we will first understand about the artificial variables. So artificial variables are added to the left hand side of an equation of a greater than equals to and equals to constraint in order to make the equation. So it is adding added to the left hand side of the equations. They as uh, they also don't take any negative value and they also assigned non negativity restrictions just like other variables that is all the artificial variables should also be greater than or equals to zero. These artificial variables are fictitious and they do not have any physical meaning. They just add it in order to simplify the process of simplex table. In case of maximization problems, negative capital M is added to an artificial variable in the objective function. And in case of minimization problems, positive M is added as a coefficient to the artificial variable. Now since our video is on minimization problem, we will be adding capital M where this capital M is a big penalty or a very large coefficient. So whenever you have to choose which variable is the largest one, always assume M as to be the largest value among all the other variables. So in minimization problems, the artificial variables has the largest coefficient with positive value. Therefore, your objective function will be minimum when its value is zero. If it is not zero, it means your objective function cannot be minimum. Simple. And before moving to the question, we'll also just quickly go through about the test of optimality. In case of maximization problems, the values of Cj minus Zj should be lesser than or equals to zero. And in case of minimization, all the values should be greater than or equals to zero. If it is not the case, then we have to improve our solution till the optimal solution is obtained. And other important point, in case any of the non-basic variables has a zero in the Cj minus Zj value, then we would say that the solution is multiple optimum means there are more than one solution and it is not a unique solution. So every time just check whether the non-basic variables has zero in Cj minus Zj value or not. Non-basic variables are the variables who are not in the basic variable column. They are in the Cj. Uh, remember in the main initial table, if you see these are the basic variables apart from this x1, x2, s1, s2. These are the non-basic variables. So if any of the zero value is here, it means the solution is not optimal and we have to improve it further. Now we'll move to the question. Suppose your question is this, that you have to minimize your objective and this is the equation and these are the constraints. Now since these are the constraints of greater than or equals to type, so we have to subtract the surplus variable and we have to add the artificial variable in order to augment our equation. So for first equation, minus S1, that is minus surplus 1 plus artificial 1. Then for next it is minus surplus 2 plus artificial 2 and all these are greater than or equals to 0. And if we see about the objective function, so we have to add capital M as a coefficient to the artificial variables and we have to subtract 0 as a coefficient of surplus variable. So this is your now augmented objective function. Now next is we have to construct our initial simplex tableau. So first step under this that you have to decide your basic variables. So in first equation your basic variable is a1 not the surplus variable. We have we should not take surplus variable as the basic variable in any of the case. Always take either slack variable or the artificial variable. So this artificial variable a1 is chosen from first equation. Then from second equation it is a2. And if you see the coefficients of these in the objective function is capital M. So this is capital M and capital M. 
if you see here these are the coefficients of these variables in the objective function so for x1 the coefficient is 20 so here it is 20 then for x2 it is 30 for s1 it is 0 s2 0 a1 it is m and a2 it is m so first step is you have to add the coefficients of the variable in the objective function then solution in order to find the solution bi you have to put all the non basic variables equal to 0 so this is 0 this is 0 this is 0 so a1 is equals to 50 for a2 it is 0 0 and 0 so a2 it is 60 now this is done now we have to add the coefficient matrix so for equation 1 the coefficients for x1 is 1 for x2 it is 1 for s1 it is minus 1 s2 there is no s2 so 0 and a1 it is 1 and for a2 it is 0 for the next equation x1 is 1 x2 is 2 s1 is 0 s2 is minus 1 a1 is 0 and a2 is 1 so this is your coefficient matrix now you have to calculate the zj value which is the sum of the product of the values under the variable with the corresponding value of cj column so in this case 50m plus 60m is 110m then next is m plus m it is 2m then m plus 2m so 3m then next is negative m again negative m m and m for the next cj minus zj so 20 minus 2m next is 30 minus 3m then it is m m 0 and 0 now after calculating this the test for optimality of minimization problem says that all the values should be greater than or equals to 0 if not it means the optimality has not been achieved in this case if you notice since m is the largest coefficient so when you subtract this the values are still negative so now you have to select the largest negative value as the incoming variable and in this case if you see the largest negative value should be this because 3m when you multiply 3 with m this 2m is lesser as compared to 3m so in this case this should be your incoming variable and this is your incoming variable so this is your key column now you have to calculate the ratio so ratio is 50 by 1 is 50 then 60 by 2 is 30 so while selecting the ratio you have to select the least positive ratio so 30 is your outgoing variable and this is your key row now you have to locate the key element so in this case the key element is 2 now you have to improve the solution and in order to improve the solution the first step is that you have to divide the base row with the key element so in this case the key element is 2 so you have to divide this entire row with 2 and now x2 has come as a basic variable and a2 variable is the outgoing variable so it is now out from the simplex table and here x2 so the coefficient of x2 is 30 so if you move to next table so x2 is now entered into the simplex table along with its coefficient and the entire base row is divided with the key element that is 2 in order to find the remaining values you have to use the this uh, below formula that is old value minus corresponding key row value into corresponding key column value divided by key element sorry the formula is this yeah the formula is like this so old value in this case is 50 so it is 50 minus the key row value is 60 and key column value is 1 so 50 minus sorry it is 50 
minus the key row value is 60 and the key column value is 1 divided by 2. So 50 minus 60 divided by 2. So 50 minus 30 is 20. Similarly for x1 it will be 1 minus key row is 1. Key column is 1 divided by 2. So 1 minus 1 by 2 will be minus 1 by 2. Similarly if we see about x2. So x2 value is 1. The old value minus key row value is 2 into key column value is 1 divided by 2. So 1 minus 1 it should be 0. So similarly you can find out the rest of the values and then you can compute ZJ and CJ minus ZJ value as we have done in the previous table. So now all the value should be this. So you can check this value while solving your question at home and in case of any doubt in the any of the values you can definitely write to me in the comment section. Okay after this is your final table again you have to check for the optimality. So in this case also the values are all the values are not greater than or equals to 0 because minus m by 2 is the is the largest value in these cases. So still there are some negative values and now you have to decide which is the largest negative value. So in this case this is the largest negative value because m is smaller than 15. So this is the largest negative value. So we have to decide this as the incoming variable. So this is your incoming variable. Now again you have to calculate the ratios. So 20 divided by 1 by 2 is 40 and 30 divided by 1 by 2 is 60. So now 40 is the least positive ratio. So now this is the outgoing variable. So now x1 is coming into the basic variable and now a1 is going out from the table. So again you have to repeat the entire process in which x1 will be coming here along with its coefficient 20. The entire base row will be divided with the key element that is 1 by 2 and for the remaining values you have to use the formula. So this is the final value after solving it. In case of any doubts please write to me in the comment section so I can explain it further. But this is the final table. Now again you have to check for the optimality condition. Now you can say that all the values are greater than or equals to 0. But because this m is now the positive value. So anything subtracted from the capital M it is positive only. So now our optimality conditions has been satisfied. And all the values in the cj minus zj row are greater than or equals to 0. Therefore we can say that the solution is minimum and it cannot be improved further. So the optimal solution is x1 equals to 40 and x2 is equals to 10 and the minimum objective value is 1100. So in case of any doubts please write to me and please subscribe to my channel otherwise you will not be able to receive the regular updates. I will be completing the entire business mathematics labels of the BCom honors. So please subscribe to this channel and please like and share this video. Thank you and see you soon.